Good morning. We made it to Friday. Believe it or not. So, I think, because I have to tell them what you read, but I think we're supposed to be really nice again today. Maybe this afternoon start getting nasty, possibly. So, <clears throat> but it's supposed to be another beautiful day. And then tomorrow, my phone was saying the possibility of snow. I don't know. That was what it said the other day. I haven't walked, looked at it for a few days, and I know everything changes, seems like, by the hour on weather. <clears throat> but it is uh, beautiful right now, so we are going to enjoy it, right? <clears throat> so, but, well, good to see each one of you on here today, and, uh, Oh, Sean, come on. We don't want snow. I know you're one of those ski bums, so. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm kind of ready for the uh, sunshine, open water, so I can get my fancy boat out on the water here before too long. So, but. <clears throat> anyway, it's a good day. I did hear that uh, Judy Summers is going to be able to go home today. And so you pray for Judy and uh, pray for um, pray for her family. I know that uh, her daughter, Deb, is having to go back to Oregon, get some things in order before she gets back. She'll come back. Her other daughter, <clears throat> um, uh, Cindy, I think, um, is coming up with some of her family, so <clears throat> she's going to have somebody around, so that's good, but you continue to pray for her. Pray for one another, and Teresa did all of her tests yesterday, and you know how that goes. You take tests and do all these tests and then wait to hear, and they never seem to get in much of a hurry, so <clears throat> we will... Uh, do what we can, right? So, anyway, I was reading this morning, and a um, couple of things. First of all, I I, I get that notification in um, on my Bible app, and uh, a good verse came up. Thought that I would uh, <clears throat> share it first of all with you. And Second Chron Second Chronicles fifteen in verse seven. And it says, and be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your your reward shall, or for your work shall be rewarded. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, <clears throat> for your work shall be rewarded. And, you know, we just need to, <clears throat> I know I harp on this, but it is my devotion, right? <clears throat> it's what God seems to be giving me, at least this week anyway, is to uh, stay the course and do what we need to do and um, just be right with him. And, you know, we, we keep a close account of sin. We confess that to God. We make sure that we are uh, cleansed from those things in our lives and then walk powerfully in the spirit and to be used by God and be strong in doing that. And don't, don't, um, <clears throat> do not, uh, let, let this world get you down and cause you to, uh, fall into a path that you don't want to go. Right. <clears throat> so, all right. Another good reminder I had Psalm 47 <clears throat> and, <clears throat> you know, Sometimes maybe, I, I, I don't know, I have no idea. Maybe people get tired of hearing some of the things that I repeat over and over, but I find it interesting to me that God continues to remind us that uh, evil will be judged. And so this must have been and has been a, um, it, it has been a, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting like 9,000 texts right now. 
on a text group. They decide they do this at nine o'clock every morning. So, um, <clears throat> but anyway, get back. I'm my mind is everywhere today. But the the reminder is, is that you know God is constantly showing us that He judges evil and judges the wickedness. And uh, why would He do that? Well, it must be prevalent through every generation. You know there there are. Those that are always um, beating their chest and they're they're trying to uh, gain some something that they think is going to give them contentment and satisfaction, and so they uh, step on the backs of others, they use others, they uh, seek to inherit all these things on the earth, and ultimately they're going to lose everything that they seek, and and. So it just seems that, that this has been prevalent through every generation. So God constantly seems to be reminding us that he's got things under control. And so it, it's good for me. I, I don't want to, I do not any longer, I, I just do not want to dwell on on the craziness of, of the wickedness and um, all of the, the challenges that may come I mean, if they come, they come. We'll we'll cross that when it when it gets here. We need to quit borrowing evil and 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 quit, you know, adding more to to the issues than we have. That that causes all kinds of anxiety and stress because it's thinking and dwelling on things we have no control over. So stop. You know, we need to stop doing that and and just focus on what we need to be doing today. And um, that's that's for me. I, I I just don't, you know. Let let these morons kill each other. I, I mean, Ukraine, Russia, blow each other all to smithereens. And and you know, let let BDB bang his chest and think how great he is. God could wipe that whole mess out with a spoken word if he wants to. And. and you know the 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 arrogance of all of that, and we we just need to stay focused on. I need to stay focused on knowing that God's got things under control, and the devil constantly wants us to uh, give give thoughts to um, you know anything but God, right? So anyway, Psalm forty seven. Th this is a help to me. O oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us. The excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Selah. God is gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet, Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises unto our king, sing praises, for God is the king of all the earth, sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the heathen, God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God, he is greatly exalted. I, I'm right here. We, we need to praise God. We, we need to remember that, that God sits on the throne today and God will, will do what God wants to do. And uh, we just, we need, I don't say just, we need to do what God tells us to do and live the way that God wants us to live and be honorable and pleasing to him in all that we do. And just stay stay the course. That's what we need to do. Stay the course. In Proverbs 10, verses 24 and 25, here, uh, another reminder of this. In the fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him. Remember Job, I, I believe this is what, what it's saying is, Job said that my, my worst fears have come true. Well, here we have, th this is a curse to the wicked. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him his own fear that maybe he, two two ways maybe, the, the fear that he instills in others, it'll come upon him, or the fear of the, the things that really terrify him, that is coming. You know, the, the fear of the wicked is that uh, one day they'll lose their power. One day they'll 
they'll lose their belongings. One, one day they will lose the, uh, the false respect that they think that they garnered among other people, the, the, you know, popularity or power, any of that. And one day it's going to come upon them and they're going to lose it. But the desire of the righteous shall be granted. I, I mean, we, and why? Because if we're righteous, we're going to want God's will in our lives and God will perform that. And we ought to be grateful for that and know that, that God's got things under control. And then look at verse 25. As a whirlwind passeth, so is the wicked no more. Well, you know, they can beat on their chest all they want. Hillary can continue to promote herself and think that in her mind that she should be president and she can, she can do everything she can to become what she would think is the most powerful woman in the world. And uh, the whirlwind passes, so is the wicked no more. I mean, God, God can do whatever he wants to, but the righteous is an everlasting foundation. And so good reminder to me today. Um, I, I didn't read much on the news today <clears throat> other than we know that uh, little Napoleon, uh, that, that moron tried to blow up a nuclear power plant. <laughs> All for power. That's all it is. All for power. So he's willing to blow up a nuclear power plant, uh, set it on fire. Good thing that it didn't blow up. But, um, you know, we just see the, the idiocy of, of uh, people today wanting all of this. And we need to learn to just be satisfied with what God's given us. And, and then also, let, let's, let's go on and, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Susan, it's probably best if we don't get any news updates, right? I, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the, the news anymore, all it does is it seems to promote the wicked and the evil, right? So, all right. Um, I'm also, my, my mind's everywhere because my wife had to leave early and these dogs are lunatics today. <clears throat> this warm weather has them acting nuts too. But let's go on. <clears throat> and and um, the, uh, the, the arrogance of, of religiosity, we might call it, the, the religious. And um, we should, we, we just never should um, put, I, I don't know, levels of, of, Maturity based on on works. I, I, I our maturity ought to come by a closeness that we have to God and and in obedience to what God tells us to do. And you know, men are all the time adding things that we need to do, and in, in this will uh, show people that we're religious or show people that we are. Uh, I, I don't know what whatever that and. and so so often it's just hypocrisy, but it seems like people are so willing to guard those things that they're willing to throw away a true relationship with Christ. And I say that because uh, I was reading in, in Mark and I was in Mark chapter 11 <clears throat> and verse 15 and, and uh, no, where am I at? I'm sorry. Mark, Mark chapter 11 and verse 28. Sorry about that. And, and uh, this is what they say to Jesus, all right? <clears throat> and, and this is the chief, chief priest, the scribes, and the elders. And say unto him, by what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority to do these things? I mean, the, the arrogance of, of religiosity, um, you, and by that, you end up falling in love with, with the the man-made rules that, that will show your level of, of faith or your level of obedience or, or whatever. And, and these guys had, not only were they trying to practice the, the Mosaic laws, they had added many of their own laws to this. And, 
in order to prove how religious they were. And they would parade that around in public and and let everybody know how how religious and and, and how uh, formal they were to the, the rules that they had made. And religion is always doing that. Still today, we have we have those that do the same thing today in, in their religion, in their works religion. And, um, and, and they get to the point, just like these guys, where they can't even recognize Christ. All they recognize are their works. And their works then become the whole driving motive for everything, including their power over other people. There, in, 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 in true faith and in true relationship of Christ, there, there just is not the, this hierarchy that, that the, the man wants to put on people. And the ground is level at the cross for everyone. And we need to remember that and we need to understand that. And you find that there are many religious people that reject Christ. And I just don't want to be that. <clears throat> and then he goes on in Matthew chapter 12, and in the, the uh, first 12 verses there, he talks about that. He talks about um, uh, the, the uh, certain man that planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it and built a tower and, and uh, let it out to the husbandman and went into a far country. And then he started sending people back to check on it and, and see how they're doing. And they ended up killing all these people that were to come back and report. Well, he's talking about the, the Jews that God would send prophets to them and tell them that, hey, the, the law isn't there to <clears throat> gain salvation. The law is there to show you that you are in need of a Messiah. And the Messiah is, a, is pictured in every one of these sacrifices that you make. And, and you need to understand that God doesn't want your actions. He wants your heart. When he has your heart, then he'll have your actions. And, and they just flat refuse to see that. And so they are intimidated by Jesus. And so the prophets come and they kill every one of them or beat them up severely and, and choose not to listen to them. And, and ultimately, they end up headed, going to hell because of their rejection of the Savior. And, and it's still that today. I mean, I am so thankful that Jesus is sufficient, that our faith needs to be in the saving work of Jesus. Don't, and don't say that your works are, are, are faith. Works are works, okay? They ought to be a product of faith, but works aren't faith, okay? Faith is something that comes totally directly from the heart, and it is a complete trust in your heart and in your mind, that Jesus Christ saved you when he died on that cross and was buried and rose again, uh, fulfilling the law and fulfilling all of that. And I can put my trust and faith in him and what he has done, and he will save me. Absolutely, positively, nothing else will save you. Nothing, nothing, only Jesus. He is sufficient. And so, we need to we need to get past the 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 religious ideas of things and 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 by religious i mean people stuck on tradition and thinking they must do these things in order to be saved those are honestly those are what's called sacraments and there are no sacraments in scripture the the only thing that one must do to be saved is believe on the lord jesus christ and be saved and we need to do that make sure that you've done that and so and the arrogance that comes from from these people that <clears throat> they couldn't even recognize who Jesus is and you know we we get in trouble for saying just what i said people get upset with that but it, it doesn't matter the when when we start uh, they feel like they're, you are attacking their religion. I'm not attacking their religion. I'm just telling you that, that Jesus is sufficient and your religion isn't going to get you anywhere. Your church isn't going to get you anywhere. Your, your works aren't going to get you anywhere in salvation. None of that. The only thing that gets you there is your faith and trust 
completely in Christ Jesus. And, and so that's what I have today. Sorry, my mind's everywhere. I, um, just, you know, one of those days. I mean, that's, that's the hard part about doing these devotions every day. It, it, you know, some days you're just going to get me like it is. And <laughs> so there, there are battles that go on in the mind, isn't there? And we need to stay focused. We need to see what God has for us. And we need to, to be strong and, and walk with him and not let people sway us. Let's just be who God wants us to be. And that's all I want. And that's what I want for me. That's what I want for you. And we'll, together, we'll get that done, right? So um, anyway, so might not be one of the most exciting uh, devotions today, but I hope that it helps you and uh, helps each one of us. Uh, it's the weekend. Here we go. Uh, it's supposed to be snowing. That's all right. Uh, it, it'll be, you can just know that uh, Sunday, that it, it would have to be a full-blown, all-out, uh, stop the world from turning blizzard uh, for for us to cancel a Sunday morning, okay? So Sunday night or Wednesday night, sometimes are a little different. But um, Sunday morning, you can pretty much count that we'll have church services on Sunday morning, but it's totally up to you whether you come or not. That's why we have live stream, right? And if you can't get there, I understand, but just plan on we'll have church service on Sunday and uh, be in your spot if you can. And, uh, you know, you're missed when you're not there, wherever your church is, be, be where you need to be. And be in your place and, and be an encouragement to others around. It's God's day. Let's give it to him, right? So you guys have a great weekend. And uh, I know it did start with the quarantine. You're right, Sean. Uh, two years, almost two years we've been doing this. So it's good though, isn't it? God bless you guys and have a great day.